Welcome, and in today's video, we are going to get introduced to Roblox Studio and learn all of the main components that we're going to be using while developing on the Roblox platform. The first thing that we should start off with is actually installing Roblox Studio on our computer. If you have the Roblox Player app already installed on your device, then you most likely already have Roblox Studio installed as well. If you're unsure if it's already installed on your device, on Windows, you can hit the Windows key and then start typing out Roblox Studio, and you might actually see it pop up right here. Now, of course, if you are able to open that, then that means that you've already have it installed, but if you don't see this, then we're going to go ahead and download the program and install it to our computer. To download Roblox Studio, go down below in the description of this video, and there will be a link which takes you to this page on the Roblox website right here. Otherwise, you can go to roblox.com slash create. Once you're on this page, you can click on start creating, and then you should be met with a screen that says download studio. Click on that button and download it to your computer. Once we have this program downloaded on our computer, we can go ahead and open it up, launch it, and install Roblox Studio. Once you've installed Roblox Studio, you should see this icon appear on your desktop right here, and then you can open that up, and it should start up Roblox Studio. Now, once you've launched Roblox Studio, you should see a screen similar to this. If you don't see a screen similar to this, make sure that the bar on your left-hand side of the screen, you're actually in the new tab, and you could also click on all templates at the top, and then you should see a screen similar to this. What we're actually going to do is create a brand new project. Now, there's quite a few ways of actually doing this. If we see at the top left corner of Roblox Studio, there is a file tab. We can click this, and then this expands, and then we could click on the new button right here, and that'll launch us into a new project. Alternatively, we're already on the new tab, and we can actually select from any of these templates and that'll also create us a brand new project as well. For this example though, we're going to go ahead and click on the base plate template. Once we click on that, Roblox Studio should open us up into a brand new project and here we are. Now that we're in a project, Roblox Studio looks a lot different than it just did a couple of seconds ago. Let's go over the most used components in Studio. The first one is this big square in the middle of our screen. This entire thing is actually called the workspace. The workspace is where everything in our game actually takes place and it can be thought of as our game's world. To give you a better visual understanding, I'm going to actually mess around with some of these parts. So we obviously don't know about the Explorer or even how to move parts yet, but this is just an example. This is the literal physical game world, and you can see that I'm able to move parts around and do other things like that. So hopefully that really demonstrates to you that this is our literal game world. Additionally, in Studio, you're able to test your game, and when you test your game, you can actually see you literally load into a game of Roblox. You have your Roblox character right here, and you can control everything like you're normally playing Roblox. And this all takes place inside of the workspace window. So now that we understand that this square is the workspace, let's look towards the top of our screen, and now we are actually in the toolbar. Now inside of the toolbar, there are obviously tools inside of here, which we can easily use to make our development process a lot smoother. Although currently this group of tools is labeled as tools, considering all these are within the toolbar, you can think of all of these as just different tools. Now, which tools that are being displayed in this toolbar are actually based off of the different categories that we have up here. So we have home, model, avatar, test, view, and plugins. And of course, whenever we select a different one, all the tools actually change inside of our toolbar. So when we click on model, all the tools in the toolbar now have some relation to modeling. If we click on avatar, we can see that most of these are related to the avatar. If we click on test, we have other tools. If we click on view, we have other ones. And if we click on plugins, we also have different ones as well. Your plugins tab is going to look completely different than mine because I actually have plugins installed, but that's how we're able to cycle through the toolbar. And then we have different tools. Now inside of Roblox Studio, we have something called widgets. Now what widgets actually are, are basically tools that you can toggle on or off and they create a little window and then you can use them in some way. So for example, this explorer tab right here, we can actually pick this up, drag it around, move it around and even click on the X button to close it off. We can do the same exact thing with the properties. We can move it around, we can click X on it, and just close it. The same thing goes with this output widget down here as well, and now we don't even see it. Now this is a really important lesson to know, because now we need to figure out how to actually enable all those widgets again, because some of those are very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our toolbar, and we're going to actually go to the view toggle. Now inside of here, towards the left, we actually have a button called Explore. Let's go ahead and click on that, and now we can actually see this widget is now toggled on, and we can actually visualize it. Let's go ahead and re-put it at the left side of our screen, so let's go ahead and drag it onto there and then let's go back to our toolbar and also enable the properties again as well and then let's put the properties down below here where it was originally now the explorer and properties are very important and you're pretty much going to want to have these on at all times in addition to those two the command bar which is down below there's not actually an x for this widget to close it out but we can see a couple of dots right here and this is what we can actually use to move it around and then we can drag it back down to here but anyway i like to have the command bar enabled and then you also want to have the output enabled as well now this output is very stretched i'm going to like restretch it out so there we go now that's the sizing that I like. Shortly, we'll dive into each of these individual widgets so that we understand what they're actually used for. Because like I said, you're going to be using these all the time while you're working in Roblox Studio. So you're going to want to make sure to understand how to actually enable them, toggle them on and toggle them off. Now, the first widget that we're going to be going over is the Explorer that we see right here. Now, by default, the Explorer displays a ton of services and all of these are services that are actually in our game. Services are super useful and you're going to use them a ton while scripting. And we'll learn more specifically about those later. If we actually go 
inside of the Explorer and expand the workspace service, we can see that there's a couple of different things inside of here. Now, what these things actually are called are instances. So these are all different objects. If we select any of these objects, we actually have the properties window right here. We can see that this object that we selected is actually a part and it's named base plate. Now, if we select another instance, we can see that this instance is of the spawn location type and its name is spawn location. If we click terrain, we can see the same thing. If we click camera, we can see the same thing as well. So all of these things are instances. Literally everything is an instance, but every single instance has a type. So just to fully understand the Roblox Studio language, once again, every single thing in the Explorer is an instance, but we can also be very specific. So for instance, the workspace service is of the type workspace, and it's still an instance as well, just like the base plate part. It is a part and it's also an instance as well. So when somebody uses the word instance, that can mean any object in Roblox basically. And if somebody uses a keyword such as part or spawn location or terrain or camera, that could be referring to an instance, but also with very specific detail about that specific instance. Now, just to wrap up the Explore topic, we use the Explore for a ton of things, such as adding parts or models inside of our workspace, adding scripts to the server script service, or even the starter player scripts, creating GUIs inside of SAR GUI, and much, much more. Now, like I mentioned before, we have the properties window directly below the explorer window. Currently, there's nothing inside of our properties window, but if we select any object inside of the explorer, we can actually see all the properties that each of those objects have. So for instance, when we click on our workspace, we can actually see that this object has quite a few different properties. Additionally, if we go inside of the explorer and click on the camera, we can also see that the camera has its own set of properties as well. Now, the properties an object has depends on what type of object it actually is. So this camera is obviously a camera object, and because it's a camera, it has specific properties that we could customize and change. For instance, we have the name property right here. And if we just say camera with two A's, we can see the name of this object is actually changed right here as well. Now I'm gonna actually undo that, but I'm just showing you an example. That's how we can modify a specific object properties. For instance, this object right here called base plate is actually a part. So it has properties specific to the part object. Now, another way to think about this is that instances can be thought of as individual objects. Every object has specific information, which makes them a specific object. This information is referred to as the object's properties. So of course, when we click on an object, AKA an instance, then we'll be able to see the properties it contains. Now, all instances have properties and some instances also have the same properties. So for instance, pretty much every single instance actually has a name property. Depending on what type the object actually is, for instance, this is a spawn location. This has properties such as brick color, which also share that same property with part as well. So both these objects actually have the same brick color property, while something like the terrain or a camera object actually doesn't. Now, again, just to go over how to actually modify an object's properties, let's go ahead and select the base part and then go to the brick color property. And then if we just click on this box, we can go ahead and play around with the color and easily modify its color property just like that. So here, let me give you guys a little challenge. What I want you guys to do is change the color of the base plate to be a very bright red. Additionally, I want you to rename the base plate instance to say test in all capital letters. Okay, hopefully you're finished because I'm going to show you how to do that now. If you're stuck, all we're going to do is go inside of the Explorer, inside of the workspace, and then we're going to click on the base plate. Then you can either modify the brick color or the color property. Both of these will actually change the color of the instance. And I'm just going to take that up to be really red. And then to change its name property, we could just search up the property right here. And then we can change it directly just like that. So now we understand the Explorer and the properties tab. Let's go ahead and look towards the bottom of our screen and look at the output tab. The output window is where all of your errors will be displayed while scripting. Other information will be displayed here too, such as when Studio creates a recovery file or when you save your work. And we can actually see that information displayed right there. But yes, while you're working on scripts, all of your script errors will be displayed directly inside of this output. So this is incredibly useful while scripting. Now looking even further down below on the screen, we can actually see the command bar right here. The command bar window can be used as a quick script executor. In my scripting experience over the past year, I rarely use the command bar, but I still think it's at least useful to show this to new developers. Let's actually go ahead and use the command bar. And what we're going to do is actually kind of write a small, tiny little script. As of course, this video is not meant to teach you how to script. I just want to use the command bar real quick to give you guys a demonstration. So inside of the command bar, let's type out the following words. Print, so P-R-I-N-T, all in lowercase letters. Then you're going to want to say parentheses. And now inside of parentheses, we want to use quotation marks and we want to type out the word test. So once again, type out the word print, then you have opening parenthesis 
and then a quotation mark, and then the word test, then another quotation mark, and a closing parentheses right at the end of that. Now, if you've done that all correctly, you could hit the enter key, and you should see something new in our output window right here. So first of all, congratulations, you can now call yourself a scripter because you just wrote your first script. And additionally, like I said, when you do scripting, all of your errors and other things like that are going to be displayed in the output. So hopefully that shows you the importance of having the output open while also not diving too much into scripting. Now that we've covered pretty much all of the most useful widgets and windows in Roblox Studio, let's put our focus on using the workspace. So inside of the workspace, we can actually right click and then move our mouse to rotate our camera around. Then we can use the W, A, S, and D keys to actually move the camera forward, left, backwards and right. So W is forward, S is backwards, A is left, and D is right. Additionally, we can use the Q and E key to raise our camera and then Q to lower our camera. Also, if you want to move forward or backwards, you can use a scroll wheel to do it pretty quickly. Another thing is that if you want to move just a tiny bit slower, all you have to do is press in the shift key and now we can see we're moving much slower. That can be helpful if you're trying to record a video or do something specific like that. You can just slow down and boom, there you go. Moving in Roblox Studio felt pretty intuitive to me. You can use your scroll wheel or you can use WASD and then you use E for up, Q for down, or you of course could just use like your scroll wheel, look down and move down that way. It all works. It's all pretty simple. It's not like Blender where it's extremely confusing and hard to get used to. I'll leave a link down below in the description to a cheat sheet, which you guys could have open on maybe a side monitor or your phone, or even write it down for yourself if you find yourself forgetting some of these hotkeys. So make sure you check that out. Now that we understand how to actually move our camera around so that we can see different things in our game, let's actually move some parts around in our game. Currently, inside of the Explorer, inside of the Workspace service, we should have the spot spawn location and the test part. Let's actually click on the spawn location. And now that we've selected that, let's then press the F key. And when we press that, we can actually see that our camera is brought directly to that spawn location. So we can move away and then we can hit F again and we can see that our camera angle is brought right back to focusing on that part. So that's what the F key actually does. If we select a specific part, like even if we select this base part and then hit F, it basically focuses our camera so that if we want to move the camera, we can easily pan it around that object. Additionally, since we have the spawn location selected, we should be able to put our mouse on it and then left click and then move our mouse to actually drag the part around. Now, if I'm trying to move a part really far, something that I actually do is I'll drag it over over to there and then I'll hit F that'll refocus my camera and now I can drag it over again and then redo that same process again until I get to where I actually want to go and then I can easily position it just like that here's also a quick tip is that if you ever make a mistake in Roblox studio like let's say for instance you accidentally deleted that part or maybe you moved it to the wrong spot all you have to do is hit control and Z and that'll actually undo the last action that you did you can hit control Z again and that'll undo the second to last action you've done and you can keep doing this until you run out of things to undo additionally to redo the things that you've just did. So basically the opposite of control Z would be control shift Z. So when we do that, we redo our actions instead of undoing them. So all the stuff that we just undid, we're now redoing until we run out of things to redo. So like I said, if you make any mistakes, control Z and control shift Z are always your best friends. Now let's get into the better method of actually moving parts. We want to make sure that our toolbar is set to the home tab because inside of here, we have our tool section and inside of the tool section, we have four really useful tools, the select move scale and rotate tool. Let's go ahead and actually select the move tool. And now that we've selected that, we can actually see that there are arrows on every single side of our part that we have selected. If you don't see these arrows, make sure that you actually have the spawn location selected, otherwise you won't see them. And now if we want to move this part, all we have to do is click on an arrow and then drag our mouse. Now obviously we click the arrow facing up, so we're able to move this on the up and down axis. If we click this red arrow, which is facing this direction, we're able to move it in that direction and the opposite direction as well. And then if we click on the blue arrow, we're able to do the exact same thing. So this is how we're able to precisely move objects, which is much more convenient than just moving around an object with your mouse like this. Not very precise at all. In addition to the move tool, we also have the scale tool up here as well. And now when we click that, we can actually see that all those arrows around our part turn into balls. When we click on a ball and then move that ball, we're able to increase its size and decrease its size as well, just like that. So we can make it very flat or we can make it very large. And we can do this on every single side as well. So we can stretch it out in that direction, stretch it out in that direction, and then make it very thin in that direction. Now we also have one more tool up here and that's the rotate tool. And now we actually see that there are circles basically inside of our part. And if we click on these circles, we can click them, move our mouse around and we can easily rotate the part. Now, of course, rotating it depends on which circle we actually clicked on, but depending on the circle that you clicked it is how you're actually able to rotate it. Now, you're going to be using these tools a lot, especially when you first start getting into studio, just so you can get yourself more familiar with it and play around. Instead of clicking each of these tools individually, they actually have hotkeys that you can see when you hover over them. So for instance, select is control one, move is control two, scale is control three, and rotate is control four. So if you hit control one, we now have the select tool. If we hit control two, we now have the move tool. If we hit control three, we've got the scale 
scale and so on. Now I'll leave a link down below in the description to a little cheat sheet that you guys can have open on your phone or on a second monitor or even write some of this stuff down so that you can put these hotkeys somewhere because trust me, just like you guys, I was not able to memorize all these things off the rip. But after you work in Roblox Studio for a while, all these will be ingrained in your mind and they will be super, super useful to you. Anyways, now that we have a decent understanding of how to actually manipulate parts, let's learn how to actually add a part into our workspace. So inside of the Explorer tab, inside of the workspace service, when we hover over it, we can actually see a little plus icon appears here. And when we click on that, a pop-up opens up with a ton of different instances that we could create and add directly into our workspace. What we actually want to add here is a part. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now we can see a part appears inside of the Explorer, inside of the workspace service, but we don't know where this part actually is in our workspace. So what can we do? We can click on that part to select it and then hit the F key. And now we can see our camera is automatically focused on this. So now we can move this over a little bit and we can focus on it again, get a little bit of a better angle of it. And now we can definitely see that. So we already see that we're able to use the move tool to move it around. We can also use the scale tool to scale it around as well, just like that. When we click on this, we can look at our properties tab and we can see all the different properties that it actually has inside of here. And we can adjust any of them. So if we wanted to adjust the name, we could call this wall or something like that, for example. You could also mess around with its color and other things like that. So now we understand how to move around in the workspace, how to manipulate parts, how to add parts to our game. We should actually learn how to test our game as well. Now, how to actually test our game, go up to our toolbox and we actually want to go to the test tab. And inside of here, all we have to do is click on the play button and that'll start up our game. Now, how Roblox normally works is when you first join a game, where your player actually spawns is wherever your spawn location actually is. So that's why we spawned in right here. And then we can see our spawn location and we can also see the part that we added to our workspace right here as well. So now we're literally inside of our Roblox game. And if we had scripts or anything else like that, we could of course test those. But now we're literally playing a Roblox game. So this is pretty cool to know that you can actually test your own project out and just play the game like you normally would. If you want to stop testing, go back up to our toolbar and click on the stop button right there, or you could hit shift F5. Now our project is very basic, but a really another useful lesson to know is how to actually publish our game so that you could share this with your friends. Back up on our toolbar, let's go to the home tab and then let's actually click on game settings. Once we click on that, we should see this screen right here and click save to Roblox. Now another screen pops up with some information that we can actually type out about our game. So what is the name of our game? We're just going to say test project. We don't have to fill in a description and we don't even have to include any of this other stuff if we don't want to. I always disable team create because I despise the team create system in Roblox, but that doesn't really matter for you. Additionally, you can set the creator as me, which would be your own Roblox account, or if you own a Roblox group, you could also specify that specific group here as well. And then once you have all this information set up, then go ahead and click on the save button. And now your project has been saved to Roblox, and you could even invite your own friends to play this as well. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, as always, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox development content. As always, I also have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and you can access to a ton of scripts and different game files that I've made throughout my entire career. You guys can go ahead and check that out in the description down below. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.